Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is me, Jonathan Alexander, and I'm here to host our show, Live Laughter Happiness. <clears throat> Today, I have my um, co-host, Barbara. Are you there, Barbara? Yes, I'm here. Hi, everybody. Now, are you okay, Barbara? Hi. I mean, you know, I've been, you, you seem you seem a little bit like uh, that you've been sick. Are you okay? Or are you are you you're not like going up or anything? Are you okay? Yes, I am fine. Thanks, Johnny. I just had a very <laughs> long weekend and I was taking a nap, but I I'm feeling much better. So I'm glad okay, to good. be here. Okay. And so thanks for All asking. Right. Now, our other co-host is uh, Kelly. Are you there, Kelly? Kelly, are you there? Mm. She is listed as here. Hmm. Are you there, well, Kelly? It could be her. Could be her connection. No. Okay. Well, uh, maybe we'll get back to her. We'll see. I can see if she's there in a minute. Now, your name. As I wanted to make sure I said right, Pardis, right? Pardis yeah, Petra. you can say Pardis. You can say Pardis. Either way, it's fine by me. Pardis. I haven't, okay, I mean, so, you're the only Pardis I've met. Oh, well, but there, there are a number of them out there, actually. I have a cousin named Pardis. There's a number of them. If you if you Google, you'll find there's a, I think there's one. She's a renowned scientist, so... There wow, are a number Paradis. of them out there, but it's Paradis. Yeah, it's not. Um, a, it's, is it's, the, a per, it's a Persian name. So, it's not oh, I have a question popular. about your name. I have a mm-hmm. question about your name. Are you yeah. saying that uh, the S is silent if we want, or are you saying Paradis no. or Paradis? It's always to the S, though. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so pretty. I love your Thank name. You. And it, yeah, Thank it's you. Yeah, it's not a, the most common name, but I love those kinds. And my daughter has a P name, too. I like P names. Priscilla. <laughs> pretty. <laughs> I do. I've always That's liked That's a pretty them. name. Thank you. So you were saying before the show that Johnny asked you to come on because it was Halloween time, and and then the show started, so I didn't – hear exactly what you were going to say. Yeah, I mean, um, in addition to working with angels and connecting people to their spirit guides and Reiki yes. and life, I also do mediumship. Uh, so Johnny reached out to wow. me and said, are you available? Yeah. And I said, now, sure. Wonderful. Okay, oh, now I think it's gonna be Kelly so is Kelly is, is back on the line. Are you there, Kelly? Yeah, can you hear me this time? Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hi, Kelly. Oh, okay. hi. I'm now, sorry. It was weird. We have... I didn't have me on. I could hear you guys, but you couldn't hear me. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. All right. Now, we have a whole uh, bunch of people who are wanting to call in. So what I'm going to do is right. I'm going to go with our first caller. It will be area code. Give me one second here. But oh, wait a minute. Let me here. let me just say what? something before we get on to the callers. Um, sure. I feel I feel like I might have somebody here for Barbara. So let me ask Barbara. Oh. Are you. I mean, I I know you're under the weather, so I don't. I I'm a. I just. But you know, it could be for either you, Johnny, or Kelly. But when mm-hmm. when Barbara started to speak, I I started to feel like there was somebody here for her. Um, so we could go to the callers, but I really would like to try to to speak to this person and make sure it's really for Barbara, if that's okay. okay. Well, that would be nice. That? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so I feel like I have a female here. I feel like she's the energy. I feel is a grandmother energy. Um, she actually is. She's kind of funny because. She's telling me she wasn't the typical kind of grandmother in the sense that she wasn't all sweet and fluffy, if that makes any sense. Um, hmm. She, Let me ask her what side of the family. 
I almost feel like she's on your mother's side of the family. And look, I just want to say right off the bat, as a medium, we're never perfect. There's always right. going to be no's. There's always going to be like glitches. No one ever does this work and it's perfect, perfect, perfect. When you see it on TV, I, I have to tell you, they will edit out a lot of the no's. Um, right. So just be honest with me and I'm okay with it. You can just tell me okay. that makes sense. That doesn't make sense and so forth. So I, okay. again, so I feel like this is a woman, it's like a grandmother energy. Um, but you know, what's interesting now that I'm, I've said what I've said and I've gone back to tapping in, I feel she's showing me making cookies. So while oh. I did say that she wasn't fluffy, she's also showing me making cookies for some reason. Um, would you say that you had a grandmother that had like an energy that was like, <laughs> she also had a sweet side, but she also had a tough side. Does that make any well, sense yeah. to you? Oh yes. My grandma okay. Moore, she uh, also raced cars. Oh, fascinating. And this is on your mother's side of the family? No, that's my dad's no? mom. And Okay. It's my dad's mother, my so my grandma more, so my dad's uh-huh. mom. And so she was very sweet grandma, but she was not like this typical grandma. She had trophies for from racing cars, but later in life as an older woman, she went into that. So that was really cool, but uh she very wasn't interesting. like so yeah, dress so or tell anything me like too the other much. one. Try not okay. to tell me too much. You can just tell me like, yes, no, maybe, so that maybe we can let her talk. Because it could also be that I have both grandmothers here, and oh. that's why I got one energy versus the other. So let me ask this energy to come closer to me and speak to me. Okay. I might give me signs, okay? Um, okay. I do feel like both were he had been here and I do feel in the beginning I felt it's interesting it's like first it went to a tough energy then it went to a sweet energy and then it felt like one who has a combination but now that you've spoken about grandmother more right grandma more yeah. I feel like she's come forward she's giving me the feeling like she didn't have a very easy upbringing she's giving me the feeling like her toughness came through hard life lessons. She's also making me feel that, um, like you did say, that she made some choices later in life. I feel like she was somebody that it, earlier in her life she did what she was told to do, and she kind of, I'm hearing, like, she told the party line. But what I also am getting a sense, and I guess you gave it, what you did share, is that at some, but she's saying, like, Around her 40s and 50s, she kind of just switched and decided to do whatever the hell she wanted to do. I almost feel wow. like she's giving me a feeling like she drank too. Like she just kind of did more of what she wanted to do. She didn't, again, she didn't do what was expected of her. Does this make any sense to you? Uh, I'm confused still at which one it could be because when you say one thing, then it makes sense for one grandma and then... Another mm-hmm, thing makes mm-hmm. sense for the other grandma, so now I still don't really know which one it is. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes what happens as a medium, we end up doing that. It's it's not a, a perfect art, and there are times that sometimes you think you're talking to one, and then you're getting crosses of both, okay? So okay. what I do feel, though, is that the one that the one – I, so the one that was the the one that drove, right? She was the one who I can say um, later in life she did what she wanted, like you said. But she also was the I don't know why I see the drinking thing. Is does that pertain to her? That, that, that's the other grandma would uh, oh, go travel around in the interesting. RV. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she likes drinking. Uh, okay. Later. You know what we're gonna do. I'm I'm going to stick to I'm going to stick to the first one that I got which is the your mother's mother. So she's telling me that even that she also had a side to her where she wasn't always very sweet. She's telling me that she had a side to her which was actually a little bit less sweet than the other one could be. Does that make sense? No, uh, not really. Not I don't know. This is I'm going to trust what I get. 
because this I feel this more strongly, Barbara. I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna respect what you say, but I'm gonna just keep on going with this one because she's telling me yes. that she was a really tough cookie. And she's also telling me she was a no nonsense kind of woman. And she's also giving me the feeling like she she again, like I said, she drank, she did what she wanted to do, she didn't really listen to what other people said, but she's saying that the first part of her life she did what she was expected to do. She's also telling me that she's the one who had the hard lessons in life. Does that make sense to you? Well, yes, but, you know, I don't know, maybe, because I, I didn't grow up in their same city. My dad moved us away, so there are things probably that I don't even know about her. So do yes, you know why and this she is wants another, to even come forward? Right. This is, this, I'm glad that you pointed this out, Barbara, because quite often what happens is that when a person does mediumship, the person who's receiving it, which is called the sitter, will oftentimes not even know, and they'll have to do research later on, or they don't even remember. And even I've been guilty of that, where I've been in the audience, and I had somebody come through for me, and I didn't recognize them. And I didn't remember who they were. And then it didn't hit me until a week or two later. So this can happen. Either you don't know or it doesn't make sense to you at the point in time. So what I'm just being told to tell you about this woman is that she is coming through to you. And that even though you're saying you didn't know her very well, she's saying that she was a very multifaceted person. And she didn't. She knew how to present herself in one way, but she also lived her way, did whatever the hell she wanted, regardless what other people thought. And that as she got older, she's saying she got sassier and more self-expressed. She's also telling me that she's she's giving me the feeling like cooking wasn't really her thing, though. I don't know why. I feel like she did it when she had to do it, but I don't feel like this was something that she had a passion for. I feel like she's telling me that she only, it's like she she had felt like she was brought up in a different era than what her soul had wanted and needed. So what she's giving me the feeling is that had she been raised at this era she wouldn't have necessarily done all the traditional things that she was expected of her to do um mm-hmm. what she is telling me to tell you is that your spirit is actually a lot like hers where oh. you do what you want to do and you beat to your own drum and she's saying to continue to do that because that's made you who you are and that awesome. you've taken that. she's saying you've taken risks in your life that other people around you have told you when you, before you did them that you were kind of crazy to do it, but you didn't care and you did whatever you wanted. You, you have a yeah. very strong inner knowing and inner self. And she's saying that that's a gift that you have and never to change that, that there have been times that you've doubted your decisions that you've made. And she's saying you never should because you've all, they've always taken you either to a, where you've wanted to go or lessons. So there's been no mistakes. And she's telling me to tell you that you are tired and not to worry your health. Uh, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but she's telling me to tell you that you're just really exhausted. And she's also saying that you want to be very mindful of energies of people that you spend time with and where you go, because you are very sensitive to energy as well. So she's just saying that, Sometimes you're going to be really tired when you're around certain people and you go to certain places and just take notice of what those are so that you know going forward how to proceed. Um, That's so interesting. I like all of this, and I'm feeling more of a strong connection to the grandma we talked about that we thought it was, I, you know, which I find so interesting because we don't always know, like you said, about them when they grew up like why would we and then they're past and then we just never know but I could ask go ask my dad all of these questions and he would know so but you're right about the cooking and all that too I mean she just did not want to uh well she had six kids so she had to but it wasn't like oh wow grandma's cooking you know mama's cooking wasn't no no she's (laughs) she's actually saying it was yeah no she's saying it wasn't a labor of love for her, it was a practical thing, and she says, and, and again, what's interesting is that she's indicating that if it wasn't for the fact that she was brought up in that era, she would not have been like a housewife. She just wouldn't have done all of this, and right. she was brought up at a time, it's like, 
you got pregnant, you had kids and you did it. And that's what you did. And she's saying that was not her thing. And, but she said that it came out later in life. Like she just was like, I hate to say it, but she's a little bit like, screw it. I don't care what anyone thinks. I'm doing what I want. I was, I did what I was supposed to do when I was younger and I'm so over it now. But she is saying that you may not know this about herself, but she did have some hard lessons. And part of her growing up was as a young mom that she, she really had to learn a lot about herself through parenting and running a household, and she did not like it at all. Oh, That's what she wow. said. But she doesn't have any regrets having the children that she had and the life that she had in, in many ways because she said she made up for it later in life by doing whatever the hell she wanted. So I thought that was interesting. But she's also, awesome. she's also saying, as I said, that, yeah, she's also saying though, that you've taken after her in a sense that you have a spirit that – you kind of do what you want to do. And she has admired that. And she's saying how lucky you are that you were brought up in a time where you had more of those freedoms to choose to do what you want. She's also giving me the feeling like, um, yeah, I mean, did you have your child like later in life? Yes, I did. Yeah. She's saying like you, yeah, she's saying that you did that as well. That was a choice you made later in life. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that was something she didn't get to do and, and she wished that she had. And, and so she, she's saying you've created a beautiful life for yourself and you want to be proud. Hey, oh, my gosh. Thank you. That means so much to me. And thank you very much for coming through to say those things, Grandma. And okay. if you care and you notice. <sighs> and, I, I mean, that means a lot to me. And my dad would always tell me, You always just do what you want. No matter what we all say, you're just going to do what you want anyway. We know that. With like a little snicker, he would always say stuff like that to me. And he always agreed with my decisions, though. He always, you know, had Mm -hmm. a lot of um, uh, positive, um, just everything that I do is just perfect, according to my dad, you know, so. Wow, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah, he's not, what does yeah that... he wasn't ranking on me for it or anything. But so I think I have a lot of that family in me. So now she's confirming it, and it, she so she's having fun. Per, parties is she having fun watching down on all of us, and or she just felt like coming through because she felt that. Well, I'm glad that you out. asked that because I'm glad that you asked that, Barbara. Because actually, one of the things that's really great in mediumship to really give people an indication that um, life continues is to ask them what they're doing on the other side now. So, thank you for bringing it up. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna see. It's funny. She's like showing me sitting on a porch in a rocking chair, and enjoying her life and and do you know if she liked to sip and I keep on bringing up the alcohol but do you know if she liked to sip a certain drink that was like uh, on ice and and um it's like uh discreet she wasn't like necessarily mm. swinging a bottle but I feel right. like I just see her like sitting on a porch relaxing you know and and just enjoying life uh on the other side you know, sometimes like people will tell you. A little scotch on the rock. little scotch on the yeah, rock. I almost thought, it's funny because I almost thought it was a whiskey. I saw like something like that in a, in a glass. Wow. Yeah. But I'm That's glad that you be. said it was, it was scotch. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. She wow. seems like she's that's really crazy. happy. I mean, you absolutely. And sometimes people will tell you things in mediumship that, um, even though they didn't fish in this lifetime, they're now fishing on the other side. But she was just telling me that she's she's just kicking her feet up. She did a lot of work raising a family, and again, she keeps on saying towing the party line, doing what I was supposed to do, and she's kind of just doing what, continuing to do what she did in the latter part of her life, which is relax and and sip her drink no, and do uh, what she wants. Oh, that's so nice. That, uh... I love that. Does that answer all yeah. of all of Barbara's questions, or? <laughs> I, th- I mean, I think that's it. We can go on to someone but else yeah. if we if we need uh, to. Okay, good. Yeah. Party, thank you so okay. much for that, and that's a right. I feel you know special go today, and, and that was area code really wonderful. Two and eight on. Great. 
So, so John, uh, John, I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. Oh, you're saying I put area code 218 on. Okay, great. All right. So, hi, who is this? Hi, my name is Amy. Hi, Amy. How are you? Where are you calling from? Where's area code 218? Um, I'm calling from Superior, Wisconsin. Oh, cool. So thank you for calling in. So nice to hear from you. Yeah, thank you. Um, So I take it you want to speak with someone today. Is that true? Or do you have any questions about mediumship? We can do either one. No, I do want to speak with somebody today. Um, I lost my dad in September, um, like two days right before my birthday. And um, it was pretty sudden. And my dad was one of my best friends. I I miss him a lot. I'm so sorry about that. So I'm going to say something about that. I'm going to see if people. So, all right. So I do, I do feel like I'm connecting with an energy for you, but I am going to articulate for those that are listening that sometimes when loved ones who've crossed over, um, they sometimes will show up right away immediately, or sometimes they don't necessarily show up right away. There's a belief that sometimes they need to go through some life lessons or heal on the other side, especially if they've had mm-hmm. some kind of physical illness that was mm-hmm. very um, debilitating, then they will um, sometimes take longer to be able to come through. But I am feeling mm-hmm. some, some kind of pressure and pain in my chest. Um, would it yep. be safe to say that problem. this is related to his passing? Yes. I do feel like um, with the heart, I do feel like – his actual moment of passing was quite quick. Would you, would that make sense to you? It does. Yes. He did know though that he had something going on. Is that, is that correct? Yep. Yep. He did. Yeah. He had COPD. So he had an awareness. He's given me something like I had an awareness, something was going on, but he, and I also feel like he had a bit of a, a humor too, because he's like, but when the ticker stopped ticking, I had no idea when. So he, yep, he that's so true. Him. He is very funny. Yeah. 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 He's a funny guy. I like his energy. Um, he's also given me feeling like in his youth, he was quite handsome, but he didn't know it. So he was mm. it's kind of interesting. He's saying that he was kind of like a humble, handsome fellow. And then when he got mm-hmm. older, he's so funny. He's like, then I got older when I got the confidence. I had a, I had a bit of a belly. That's what he's saying. Yeah, um, he did. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so he's saying, unfortunately, mm-hmm. <laughs> he couldn't take advantage of his looks the same way, but he said that he was always a gentleman, but he did love women. Mm-hmm. That's what he's saying. Um, yep, he but did. he was like a, he's saying he was like a, a classy, subtle flirt. That's what he's giving mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, he's like, I might just mm-hmm. talk to a lady in the post office line, um, in the grocery line, you know, make a nice, nice little Oh, comment. yeah, and he would talk and, and flirt he, with anybody. Yes, 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 yes. And he's saying that he really, um, he just loved, he just, I, I don't know, he's exuberant. I really like his energy. Mm-hmm. He loved making people laugh. And he loved yep, to make he women giggle. He just, This just mm-hmm. made his day. If he could just, and you know what he's saying, which I don't know if you know this about himself, he is actually saying that he used to play a game with himself, like how many people he'd get to laugh that day, or particularly women. <laughs> so he he had an energy about him that he really loved to spread joy, but he also mm-hmm. knew that he had like a little bit of a gift in doing this. And so he, he mm-hmm. went about this. Um, yeah, he did. Now, he's pointing to, he's giving me attention to a young boy in the family. Um, My son. Yes, my son. Yes, yes. He's. It's like he's almost saying like this is the apple of his eye. Um, yeah, it was. Noah was very, very yeah. important to him. Yeah. Oh God, he 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 still he he. I was going to say, which is something that we always tend to say when we're here and in, in you know in this lifetime together, that you know that we say that they they love this person he's correcting me and saying no 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 no. I still love that boy I still love Mm -hmm. him just because I've crossed over doesn't mean that love hasn't changed he's saying he's very Mm -hmm. proud of you he's saying he's extremely proud of you because he's saying that you have handled his passing very well he's saying for the Mm. connection that the two of you have had most people would have like really fallen apart and you he's saying he's so proud of you because he brought you up to be strong. 
He brought you up as a woman who had the capacity to know that these things happen, but that you have to Mm -hmm. still get up the next day, take care of your son, go to work, Mm -hmm. do the things that people have to do to make up for their losses in their life. And he's saying Mm -hmm. that, again, he's acknowledging and he's, he's applauding you. And I feel strong when I talk about this with you, like, wow, you are Mm -hmm. a strong woman. And he wants you never Mm -hmm. to forget that about yourself. And he's also saying that he's also saying that it's really important that you dream big because he's saying that you have some good ideas and you have some really good ideas as to what you want to do going forward in your life. You have concepts, you have, I feel like you have business ideas. I don't know. I do inventing things. He's saying you Mm -hmm. are so creative. You're so smart. And he's saying the only thing that's stopping you is that you think you have to do it all yourself. And what he's telling Mm -hmm. you to tell you is that you don't need to do that. What you could very well do is just literally find the resources and outsource these things because he's saying that you can do this. He's even saying, I'm Go look for a venture capitalist. Go look for someone to, mm-hmm. you know, do the trademark for you. You have the names of certain things that you want to do. He's saying just mm-hmm. do it, but he's saying you don't have to do it all in one day. This is what he's saying, and it's even advice that all of us can take. He's very smart, your mm-hmm. dad, and I like the way he thinks. Yeah. He's very linear, and he's saying make a list of all the things that you know that need to be done to do what you want to do. And then he's saying right. and start thinking about which ones have to be done by you. In other words, mm. which are the items on that list that, that can't be outsourced, right? So if it's something yeah. creative, like the, how you want the business or the concept or the product or whatever it is that you're working on to look and be, that's, you might be able to collaborate with someone, but he's saying it's probably something that you're going to want to do yourself. But if it's other okay. things that are attached to the project, then you can outsource it. Okay. Okay. Um, He's asking me to t- ask you if you have any questions. It's interesting. They don't. Um, they normally have like everything to say, and it's like blah, 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 you see how I'm going. And yeah. he wants me to ask you questions because he's saying that you you I always. I guess I just wish I knew he was happy. Yeah, I wish I knew that he was happy. He, okay. you know? I wish there was a way okay. that I knew. I mean, I I know okay. he is. So, Part of me knows he is, but I wish you know there okay, was just so a way that I knew he was happy. This. He's he's gonna he's he, okay. This is what he's saying. He's saying that I'm not gonna lie. I do wish that you could feel my embrace the way that you did when you, when I was there. Okay, he, mm-hmm. he's not gonna lie to you. But what he's saying is that he is happy because he he's so proud and he's able to see more of what you're doing from where he is. Not that he's in mm-hmm. your personal business. But he's able to have a bird's eye view, so to speak, of what you're mm-hmm. doing and how you operate. And he's, he's just so proud of you. He's beaming. He's mm-hmm. like, you are, you know, he's like, okay, so I don't know if you talk like this, but these are the words that came to me. He's like, you're like a badass bitch. I mean, he's just saying, mm-hmm. like, he's just basically saying, okay, and he's funny. He's like, I wouldn't necessarily talk like that, but that's the way you talk, Parody. But he's yeah, just saying no, that you right. are a type of woman. Yeah, you're the type of woman that you um, you do it all. He's saying you get up mm. in the morning and you just go and you do. And he's he's just mm. really, really um, effusive about that. But he is saying that he is happy on the other side. Um, mm. he, he's there with his mom. Um, yeah, I kind of thought that. Yeah. He's, there with his, he's there with his mom. Um, let me see. I feel like there's a male. Did he? Mm, who is this? It's like a brother energy. Hmm. Both of his parents died, and then um, mm-hmm. his um, his uncle died too in a motorcycle accident when we were young. When I was young. okay, so it's the mom's brother then. That's it, right? Mm-hmm. Or his yeah. So so that's the brother. Okay. Um. So this uncle is, I know it's so interesting. I could keep on going. You have, your family is a strong, they're strong. You have a strong Mm. energy of family. Like I even feel like the uncle, he's now coming forward. Your great uncle. I feel like he was also a handsome man, but he kind of knew he was handsome. And he, he was why he was a wild, wild card. 
You didn't know what he was mm-hmm. going to do next. And he was very much a free spirit. And he's saying he lived his life hard and fast. Um, mm-hmm. And I get the feeling he passed away on the younger side. Is that true? Yeah, he died in a motorcycle accident. Yep. Right. But, I mean, you could die. I have. I know people who died in motorcycle accidents in their 60s, right? I mean, that is possible. Mm-hmm. There are people who are life, life motorcyclists. Actually, I just had a friend um, – her husband and she were in a, in a motorcycle accident. And while she made it, he didn't make it. Um, so, and they are grandparents. So that can happen, but he, but this gentleman in particular, he's giving me the feeling he was a young guy and he's trying to say, he was like, I was like a James Dean kind of energy, you know, like <laughs> rebel yeah. and mysterious and broody he had a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. So let me just ask him if there's anything he wants to say other than hi. He's so funny. He's like, don't let your son ride a motorcycle. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but he, he's kind of joking. He's like, of course, if that's something he wants to do, then he's going to do. But he's with you. Now, as far as your father goes, I feel like if have you been wanting to have dreams about your dad? Is that what's been happening? Like you've been wanting yeah. messages, wanting yeah. dreams. And that's what your dad right. is saying. Be patient. Give it time. You're going to start feeling him. He's also saying that, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you have gifts. Are you aware that you have mm-hmm. gifts yourself? I do. Yeah. Yep. I am. Yeah. It's kind of, I'm, I'm not that great at it, but you know, I'm, uh, I'm aware it's there. Okay. He's saying meditate. I asked him why. I was like, why is it that she isn't as great as she thinks he is? And I was like, does she need to study more? Blah, blah, blah. He's saying you just need to meditate and just do more of it, and you're going to be very good at it. Um, Okay. He's saying that, that he's saying you could be a medium if you wanted to. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So he's telling he's telling me, you know what? If you really want to get in touch with me, if you really want to feel me, he's like, mm-hmm. start having your own spiritual practice. Start meditating. You can start doing non-denominational prayers. Start journaling. Start writing from your heart. And start tapping in and spending time to go within. Because he's also telling me, you go, 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 do, do, do. Uh, 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 uh. I do, it's like yeah. you're always on to the next. And I don't even know if you're sitting still while you're talking to me. I almost feel like you're doing stuff in the background. I'm not. So yeah, I just you, had to go okay. home. Yeah, no, I know. I'm, I'm never still. I'm always moving. You're not you know sitting I, still even when you're talking to me, right? I felt that. I was no. like, I'm telling you, she's not sitting still. <laughs> so what, what would benefit you is if you really want to feel from him is to sit still and to get quiet and to meditate because then your gifts will okay. expand. A lot of people who can't, sit still actually are very intuitive and that's their way of dealing with the energies that are always coming at them. But if you also mm-hmm. start learning about things like psychic protection, um, that mm-hmm. will help you as well. So he's saying, I'm very I empathetic. I very, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I just say I'm very empathetic. I, I'm, I always feel, you know, like if somebody's sad, I feel very sad. You know, I, mm-hmm. I feel their mm-hmm. energy or sadness. I feel their emotions. Mm-hmm. You know? Mhm. Mhm. So, yeah. Well, and I've also been writing to my dad at night. Yeah. I've been. I have a journal Beautiful. that I got, and I've been writing letters Beautiful. to him at night. You know, when I'm Beautiful. home alone, I just write a letter. So. Beautiful. Well, he's yeah. saying that um, the writing is really good for you. He didn't. I'm going to be honest. He didn't confirm the writing, but he says he's he's saying I get them. And, but you don't even need to write. He's like, you could just sit in meditation and talk to me. I will hear you. This is what he's saying. Oh, okay. He's saying you're, you're underestimating how connected and how close we are from this world to the spirit world. And he's saying you don't need to go far. And you don't need to even write. You could just sit in meditation. But he wants you to slow down so that he, you can feel and sense him better, but also so that you can work on your gifts and expand. But he's saying that... Mm-hmm. He's sending you his love. He's in a good place. He's, as I said, he's with his mom. He's with his uncle. Um, I also feel like there was a family dog that's with him as well. Oh um, my God, Bryn, my dog, my dog, Brynny died. And you know, that's really funny because my son had a vision and he said that grandpa is running in heaven with Brynny. And he said he's, and he's young he's and right. healthy and he's running with Bryn. So yeah, it's he a said he was dog. with Bryn. Mm-hmm. 
um, this dog. Wow, that just confirms in that. Prime, his, his dog in his prime was a very uh, vivacious dog. A very mm-hmm. friendly, very loving, and protective. Oh, yeah. what a wonderful dog. Wow. Okay. And she um, just loved I my dad. To... She absolutely loved my dad. Two peas in a pod. That's what I heard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to let you go because there's probably other people that want to speak and I don't want to take no, up too much you. time. No, thank you. This but has been I've... more than enough. What's been amazing. So oh, thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank and you, you can find me okay. at um, Medium Psychic Healer Paradis on Instagram. I will. I will. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. All right. Bye. All right. Well, our next caller Bye. is area code 863. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you for taking my call. Oh, hi. 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 What is your name? Julia. Julia. Okay. And where is um where are you located, Julia? Central Florida. I'm oh wow. Disney. You know, I'm at, I'm actually in Miami right now, even though I live in New York. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, enjoying um, the so sun you before you head back to the yes. coast. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I came here to do an event, um, a mediumship event, actually. So, um, yeah, so yeah, I love it here. I really, I really like the warm weather. Yes. I'm, I'm definitely one of those people. So I'm, I feel like I have for you, I feel like I have two gentlemen here. I feel like I have a father energy, but I also feel like I have a father's father's energy. Does that make any sense to you? Um, hmm. I'm not sure. Um, I never actually knew my birth father and I had a mm-hmm. stepfather who's passed, but I didn't really know mm-hmm. his father. So I'm not really sure. Okay. okay. Well, it does make sense though, if I had say that the father energy is crossed over. So let me just ask him if he's the stepdad or your birth father. Oh, he's giving me the feeling He's giving me the feeling this is your birth father. Um, so you uh, did he did he leave when you were young? Well, from what I understand, um, he knew that there was a pregnancy, but was never really part of it or didn't want to be part of it. He just kind of okay. So this is the image. That, okay, so. Uh, sorry to interrupt. It's just that um, I just want to share what I'm getting because I don't want to take away from what I'm getting with you telling me too much. But thank you for answering that. So what I actually see is a gentleman walking out of a house, walking out of a door. So what that indicates to me, based on what you said as well, is that he was not around and that he didn't leave at a young age. He didn't articulate that it was when you were in vitro or whether you had been born already. But he is he is giving me the sense that there's an abandonment element to this and what he's saying is that i'm not going to spend all this time telling you about me because he's like you've already articulated that you don't know a lot about me but what he is telling me to tell you is that i'm for that he's sorry he's actually saying that he's sorry because he really missed out he missed out on a lot of things because what he knows now is that this was an opportunity for him and when a child comes, it's often an opportunity for your own growth and development, but also to experience love. He's saying that he was afraid. He was afraid of the responsibility, and he was also afraid of the circumstances because it's almost like this was not, okay, he's saying it wasn't a planned pregnancy. Are you aware of this? Right. No, it wasn't. It was not. Right. Uh-uh. And he's saying that because it wasn't planned, there was a little bit of shame that he carried with him, but he's saying it wasn't the right thing to do. And he's saying though, that um, he wants, you know, he keeps, I keep on feeling energy in my solar plexus. Are you aware of the solar plexus where it's located? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he's giving me the fix. So the solar plexus for those who are listening um, this is the energy that is just a, a few inches above the belly button. It's where the ribs sen- tend to uh, separate um, uh, below the chest and uh, very close to the diaphragm. So this is an area where our power center is. And what he's telling me is that 
on some level, even though you may be at peace on a very conscious level about not knowing that father, he's saying that there's still a room for you if you choose to get healing around this part of your body and this chakra and this energy because there's still – there's somehow a part of you that carries um, – some of that that um, essence and feeling of abandonment, even though on a conscious level you may not have, let's say, felt it. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, I'm aware of abandonment issues, yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a for both parents, saying, so, yeah. Well, okay. But he's saying that, even, okay, so he's saying, though, that it's still with you on a deeper level that you may not even be aware of. So what he's inviting you and he's saying to you, first of all, he's saying he's sorry. He's saying that he does love you very much and that, um, but he loves you from a place of knowing that you were his and knowing that he, how can I say this? Like he, he does know that you are a good person and that you've done good things in your life and that you're a kind person. He's telling me that you never turn your back on anyone. So while you've experienced abandonment, the beautiful thing about you is that you've never, you've never done it to others. And he's saying and that made you a beautiful soul. But what he's also saying is that it is, uh, this is an opportunity for you based on this conversation to try to heal this part because it will carry you further in life and allow you to pursue more of the things that you've wanted to pursue in your life. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wish that I could say that I have more to tell you, but this is the message that is so important for you today. And that's what I'm being left with. Um, if you need any more insight and in like different ways that you could heal this part, you can get in touch with me, but I can tell you that there are meditations online that address healing the, the solar plexus. There are, um, I don't know. Are you anywhere near Casadega at all? Uh, I don't think it's too, too far from me. I, I was uh-huh. there once, but I don't remember exactly where it is. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, I, the name Casadega came up, and it feels like this is a place that you could reach out to them. I mean, I do healing work as well. So if if you feel like a, a positive vibe to connect with me and we could do something remotely, that we can definitely do that. But I am also want to give you another option because I'm not here to sell myself like that to you. You know what I mean? So there is Casadega, and they have resources, and they have healers there as well. So I do feel like if you were to do some investigating, you're going to find somebody if, if you feel the need to find, you know, if you feel the need to pursue this to help you with this. He's also saying that there's a past life issue attached to this as well. And that if you do choose to clear this, your life will run even more smoothly than it is. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you very much for calling in. I really appreciate it. Can I ask a question? Would it be okay if I ask a question? (laughs) Let's see where it goes. Okay. Um, Well, I'm. This is more of an intuitive question. Um, Uh I'm looking at moving over, like to the Gulf Coast, the Clearwater area. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm. I'm just uh, the timing of it. I'm a little concerned that I do it at, at the right time. So I don't know if I should like try to look for employment where I am now and work for a while and go like at the first of the year or if I should just move and then start looking for work once I get there. Um, Let me see. Your name is Julia, the... right? Julia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask, what is it that Julia should do? You know what's really crazy? And I asked again, and I even pulled out my pendulum because I, this is not what most people would tell you. Most people would tell you, you got to look for a job first. But something's telling me you have to move first, and then you'll find what you want. Um, but, of course, you know, that's the intuitive piece. But as Paradis, as a human, like out of my intuitive side, I'd be like, okay, save your money. Make sure you have some money before you go, so just in case. But – when I tap in, it's like, just go. You're going to be a lot happier there. You're being pulled to that direction. There's something. Are you going to be near the water? Is that your idea? Is that yeah, your plan? That, that's exactly what I want is to be closer mm-hmm. to the water. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I feel like it would be very good for you. I also feel you're intuitive. I also feel like um, you have gifts that have that are dormant. And I do feel like um, being by the water would help you would help clear your energy. I do feel also that you've been really wanting a fresh new start. Um, yeah. But again, like I feel your father coming in again. It's like parody all this, but she needs to get the healing because the healing will help you even access your gifts even better. It's going to give you more clarity of an inner knowing because right now he's saying that this is not the only thing you're having trouble making decisions on. There's other areas in your life that's a lack of decisiveness. And he's saying it's all tied to the solar plexus because that's your power center. That's when you know what to do. That's your confidence in knowing you're going to make the right decision. So when that area is in flux, that's when we're going, should I do this? I don't know if you do that, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, blah. And he's saying that you're a really smart woman and that you can intellectualize things, but you're also really smart because you know sometimes there's a higher purpose and there's an intuitive aspect. But what he's saying, again, is that if you were to, to get the healing, you'll be able to marry the two and make the best decisions for yourself. Okay. okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I have been wishy-washy. Should I do it? When should I do it? Should I do it now? Should yeah. I wait? Should, yeah. yeah, I've been back and forth like driving myself crazy with this whole thing. And just to to validate what you're saying about the healing, I actually, I have a phone call tomorrow with a healer to talk about, you know, if she would be the right person for me. So I just wanted Mm -hmm. to validate that, you know, Mm -hmm. I I am. Yeah. And I wrote down everything and about abandonment was one of the things that I was going to address with her. So, yeah. So beautiful, you. beautiful. That validates what I've been, you know. So now at least I feel like I'm on track, and I appreciate that he stepped in because, like I said, I I felt abandonment from both parents. So it's like you know, it makes right. you well. He, you know, yeah, he he wanted to step forward, life. and I and I'm and thank you for being open to to me speaking about that. It's a, you know, it's a it's very sensitive and vulnerable. But I want to let you know that I see you standing in the water with the wind blowing in your hair and your toes lapped up in, in the water. And I, oh, nice. and, um, I see the skies being pink over there and you're just going to really love it. You're going to really, really love it. And I do feel like the energy will give you a lot of peace and happiness. And you're the type of person, you really are multifaceted. I feel like you can do different kinds of work. You're not the type of person that has to do one kind of work. So I do feel like, Maybe in the beginning, you might have to just take something for the sake of something, but eventually you're going to find your groove and your happiness. But again, you get that healing, you start working on that healing, your own gifts are going to expand. Have you ever worked with tarot at all? Have you ever had an interest in tarot? You know, I have a bunch of boxes of cards, but they're just sitting, you know, sitting in the room. You know, I don't really do anything with them. They're just, maybe that's why I have. Yeah. Okay. Start doing them for yourself because they're showing me cards. I felt like they might. You might even have a gift for tarot, but look, tarot is something you have to learn. I even me, yeah. I, I've had to study tarot, and I don't even do it for people. I do it for myself. So you know, okay. but, but what I'm being told is that you will have the capacity of doing tarot and other things. But I would even say what's also coming is like pendulum work. You also could be working with color. Like there's a lot of interesting things that you could be doing. But get that solar plexus sorted out and um, and keep in touch. Thank you for calling okay. in. Awesome. Okay. Thank you Take so care. much. I appreciate it. Yeah. You guys have a great Absolutely. night. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Bye. Okay. Our um, Bye. next caller is um, caller – Nine five four. Are you there? Yes. Hi. How are you? Hi. Hi. And what is your Hi. name? Hi. My name is Sharon, and I'm and I'm from New York. Oh, okay. Are you like um? Are you upstate New York? Uh, no, I'm, I'm you, city. City. City? Oh, yeah. city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Great. Um. Okay. That wasn't an intuitive question. I just I don't know why I got a nine five four. I know that that's not a. That's not yeah, a I know. Number, I used so. to. I I used to live in Florida, so <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So she said your name is Sharon, right? Right. Mhm. Mhm. So okay. I just okay. wanted okay. to know if my uh, guides have anything to say, or if you want to connect with someone, whatever comes through. I mean, I don't. You know. 
So um, would it make sense to you if I connected to uh, your mother? Yeah, sure. Okay. She's crossed over? Is that true? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I feel like she's a sassy woman. I feel like she's quick on her feet. I feel like um, she took very good care of herself. I see that, like, she's paying attention to my nails. I just got my nails done. She, <laughs> um, But she's seeing that her nails are more conservative than mine. I, I happen to get my nails uh, done by a nail artist friend so they're qu- kind of wild right now but she was saying that she uh, she she uh she's pointing out how she took care of herself in her grooming um she's also saying she would she was the type of woman you could joke and say that she would never leave the house without her lipstick on um I'm also feeling like um she was very mindful in the way that she carried herself she had an essence of grace um <sighs> But she's also saying that she didn't I would you say could you say that she I don't feel like she had a career outside the home. That's the sense I get. Is that true? That is true, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's she's saying that yeah. It's interesting. And but I'm I you know, I have to say this. The reason why I'm kinda of going ah, ah, ah about this is because she was a little conflicted about this, even though she may not have articulated this to you. I almost feel mm-hmm. like she, when she looks back on her life, she has no real complaints, but she does think to herself, she could have done more had she been around in a different time, just as I said to this other woman, uh, similar to that, because she's saying that she was, she, um, she was smart um, or she still is smart. Uh, do, do you, did she, uh, it's interesting. Did she look at like, um, cookbooks? Do you see, I see like a book opening. I see somehow like reading, but then I also get a sense like there's cooking involved. Are you, are you familiar with this? She never, she, ne- she didn't like to cook, but she loved to read. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. 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 Because she's also, because she's also telling me. Yeah. So this is what made her smart, she's saying, is that she had a penchant for reading, and she read a lot, so she was kind of like a bookworm. But she's showing me that if she had to – okay, so now I understand what I'm getting. So what she's saying is that if she had to cook anything, she would read it. She would look it up. She didn't have – um. she's saying that cooking didn't come naturally to her. And, and okay. she's saying it's unfortunate because so many <laughs> – this is kind of funny. She's like, so many women were put, been put in the position where they've had to cook in, for their families when it doesn't come naturally to them. She said, women today, you have a choice. It's a beautiful thing. Yes. <laughs> um, she's also showing me, it's interesting, she's showing me that she comes from an era where women would wear fur. It's like, like a stall, like a stall or shawl or – I don't know. She's showing me like – um. She's showing me like a uh, like almost like a fox uh, around her neck, like a clip. And it doesn't mean that when, when by the way, when, when loved ones show a medium these things, it's not always literal and exactly that item, right? She but wore she a mink stole, me. you know, a mink stole. Okay. When, you know, in the right, 60s, okay. the okay, 50s. Okay. Yeah, that era. <laughs> right, right, right. She's showing me this. Yeah, that's funny. Okay. Um I don't know. She's making a point of about the fox. Was fox more expensive than mink or no? Do you know this? I I really, I really don't know. I really don't know. I think she had it's a. It's so funny she, because she's, she's saying that even though she had the mink, she also would have liked to have the fox as well. <laughs> she's so funny. I think, I think she just, she loved having nice things. And, and she's she taking did. pride in like. She's also taking pride in jewelry. Like I see, like a pearl necklace. Oh my goodness, um, she loved that jewelry. Yeah, she loved the. She loved yeah. to look. You know, she just took a lot of pride in the way she looked. You know, it yes. was important and to I her to did, look. I, you know, mm. it's in mediumship. They they oh. tell us like in the trainings that I've done. It's like you don't want to spend too much mm. time on the appearance. But this is this mm. is her world. I mean, she uh, she did do what is expected of her in terms of. Right, you know, being a mom, but um, looking great was was really something she valued. I mean, she's saying like, look, I I was like a. Would you say she was almost like a contemporary, or she she valued like Jackie O of that era? Yes, yes, yes. She used, yeah. to, she used to always say Jackie O, Jackie O, Jackie. O. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
she's telling me about Jackie O. And she's even pointing to the shoes. She's like Ferragamo shoes, uh, always wearing stockings, very well put together. She was she also yeah, she told always me that she had a routine. Did she have a routine? It almost feels like she did. Like she would like get her hair done once a week. She would get her like yes, she certain yes. days. She oh my god! Yeah. Done. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, Absolutely. I understand this woman. Okay. So let me just see if there's anything else you want to tell you other than how fabulous you look. And care of uh-huh. um, you know, she's saying she's very proud of you. And she says uh-huh. that you, but she, she's so funny. She's saying she wants you to put your feet up more. She's saying she, you work too hard. You're too hard on yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm. So this is what she's saying. She's saying that it's interesting because, like, in this era where women have been given so much more freedom to choose and do as they they please, she's saying they're also working too hard. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, she, and she's like, you know, there was some beauty in the old-fashioned ways, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's right. I look good. But she would always – she would – she would always say that to me, Sharon Rest, Sharon Rest, Sharon Rest. Well, that's what she's saying. It. She's saying yeah. it again. She's saying it again. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, here I am like, acknowledging how what I got was amazing. But I even I get yeah. impressed sometimes that what they're telling me is being able to be confirmed by by um, others such as yourself. Is she so doing is okay? She so- is she is she is she happy? Is she you, you know, know what she's get? She's she's dancing. She is showing me she's dancing. I feel like this woman later in life had difficulty with mobility, perhaps. Is that true? Or she? Yes, she, she broke, broke her hip. hip. She broke her okay. hip. Okay. So mm. she's, she's, it's almost like, I almost see her like sitting in a bed at some point. So I, I feel like, um, did she have a walker as well? Yeah. yeah, at the end, yeah. yeah. I well, see that. she yeah. couldn't move. No, it was very sad. Mm-hmm. But what she's saying is now she's dancing. She's moving quite yeah. great. She's having. She's, oh. she's in great shape, and and she's showing me what she looked like in her heyday in her youth. Um, she looked like a contemporary of Jackie O. She looks great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and she's sending you love. And oh. again, she keeps on saying, Sharon, don't work too hard. Put your feet yeah. up. She's saying, don't. <laughs> and, and and she's almost saying, like, don't let your feet get ugly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, on your feet for well, she was long. always she was always at the podiatrist. Always at the podiatrist. Oh, so that makes so perfect funny. sense. <laughs> that's so funny. Okay. She was a typical she was a see. typical Long Island housewife, you know, and in the, in the oh, 60s yeah. and in the 50s. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, right. she was quite a character. Very funny. Very you know vain to the end, and you know. Very, very, the sweetest lady. <laughs> so, and I miss her dearly, dearly. You know. oh, well, she, she's telling me to tell you that um, she's with you and she's very proud of you. Um, oh. And, and that she, she wants you to know that you will, you, you know, that there will be a time that you'll be reunited. Um, uh-huh. Is there also, a, uh, I keep on hearing the word son, son. Um, no, but I'm going to be honest with you because I feel like she's leaving, so it's not that strong what that is. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, uh, I mean, I lost my husband, so that was you know, mm-hmm. yeah, just let me see. Is she, is she talking about him? Maybe son in law, yeah. Let me just see. So he was, was he like quite taller than her? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was taller than her. I almost feel like she came up to his chest only. Like she was quite petite next to him. Does that make sense? She was petite. Yeah. She was on the petite side. (laughs) Yes. But she's showing me him as being quite taller than her. Okay. Um, She's very funny. This is what she's saying, and I hate to do this to you, but this is what she's saying. She's saying he's here, but there are other people listening, and if you want to talk to him, she's like, you need to contact 
she told me to tell you to contact me and we'll talk <laughs> another time because she's saying that there's that you know and it's funny she's almost like the conversation that has to be had between you and your husband she almost wants it to be private and she also feels like it should be a more quality time she's like right now it's like she's saying like paired, and she's telling me to tell you like i'm i'm like rushing in a way because it's like i've got to i'm thinking about you know well it's it's person. also it's also the end of the hour and i i appreciate it i don't want to take any more Aww, of your, your well, time because, but like, i i just yeah. want you to know that i see him and that i see that he's with your mom and he's healthy and he's doing well and he's sending his love but that if you want to have a more extensive connection please get in touch right. with me okay oh okay. okay all right all right well, all the best you, many Sarah. blessings thank you so so much. You Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Are you there, ma'am? I am still here. Okay. So are you ready for another caller or uh yeah, we can do we can do okay. another one. Um I'm I'm being told that we could possibly do two more. But let's see how I feel. Okay. I don't want to get like too depleted. Okay. But um, all right. Yeah, let's take another we'll one. We'll go with area code six four six. Okay. Okay. Hello. Six, how six, are you? There? Hi. Good. Yes. How are you? What is your name? My name is Diana. I'm from New York. Another New Yorker. Oh, hi, Diana. You said. Yes, Diana. Okay. All right, Diana. Um. I feel a father energy around you. Um, I feel like he's a very handsome man. I feel like he has some kind of, I don't know why, I feel like there's a connection to the military in some way, like doing some kind of service. Um, I see him in like some kind of, oh, I don't know, the kind of hats that they would wear on like Gomer Pyle, not Gomer Pyle, uh, with Andy Griffin, I don't know. It's like Andy Griffin would wear that hat with Don Nuts. That show, I don't remember that new show. Do you know what show I'm talking about? No, no. Oh I know gosh, it was the. Sh- what is the name of that show, Barbara? Oh, what is the name? Yes, that. Oh, Andy Griffin show was it? Andy Griffin show, yeah. That was yes. the best show. So, I never. I I can tell you that was. That was a show that was on um, syndication when I was growing up, but I'm just being shown someone wearing clothes like that. So is it Diane or Diana? It's Diana, but people call me Diane. Okay, because I keep on hearing both. Okay, so Diana, um, um, (laughs) does anything I said make sense, sense to you at all? No, uh, because we don't. I don't have anybody in the military for my family. Okay. On either parts so of my of my family. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I don't know why I'm being shown this very strongly, though. So are you are you aware that any of them like did any time in the service or anything of that? None of this. No. No, not my my two grandfathers didn't serve. My father didn't serve. None of my uncles Interesting. served. Interesting. So yeah. who knows, because because we have others on the line, it may not actually be for you. Sometimes what can happen is, right. even though I'm trying to talk to you, it might be someone for, uh, it could be for Kelly, and it could be for Johnny, for all I know. Or even maybe Barbara again, I don't know. But let me <laughs> just go back and see if there's anyone that's here. For, let's, see, let's see who this person is. Whew. Okay, so this is what I'm being told, and I don't normally do it this way. I'm being told I need to ask you who you want to speak with, because one of the things that came up was that initially when you called, I heard this is good, that it's like psychic versus mediumship, but then I felt the presence yes. of a man. Okay. Yes. So yes. Do, yes. Are you more interested in more psychic? For... Is... Yes. Okay. It was. Right. It was just a, a one a one shot. Yeah question it was like um, okay you know okay that could be also why I was told that I could take two more people because psychic is sometimes a little bit easier than mediumship but go ahead oh right um so I was applying for from vet school vet, vet medical school and in you know, Australia mm-hmm. and um mm-hmm. I I just received the notice that they did not accept me so 
I am like devastated. <laughs> not devastated, but um, <laughs> you know. Um, it's a I, shock, I'm not, right? Are you shocked? Well, yeah, I was a shock because I was oh. not expecting that at all, actually. And um, oh. and so I almost I'm feel like, like okay. it should be easier. Mm-hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but am I? I'm almost yeah, sorry to interrupt you, but is it true no, that no, no, like, okay. it, it should be kind of easier for you to have gotten in a program there than one in the states? Exactly, that's my point. Yeah, exactly. That it, it would have been and easier. Yeah, and the thing is, it's like you could get into one in the state, but you decided to do this partly because of adventure, too, right? And is there love around this, too? Like, I feel like, I don't know. It's like, you just really want to go to Australia. Is that true? No, 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 no. There, they, they, There's reason. For, uh, I, no, it's not. I'm yeah. not. It's not a joy trip. <laughs> I actually definitely want to go into the program, and um, I actually I've always wanted to be a doctor, and I do uh, want to work with animals, just specific animals, you know, like no, um, I'm not saying I'm animal. not saying that that's the joy. It's like like look, I I went to law school. I was a lawyer for ten years. There's no way in hell I can imagine that you'd be the type of person who's going to apply to vet school in Australia just because you want to hang out with surfers in Australia. It's, it's that there's an element that I feel like you also are open and you like the idea and the possibility of going to, to Australia. So, cause you could apply to vet school in the middle East. Right. So it's right, like there's right, definitely right, right. an element of, of Australia that's appealing to you in addition to the, the vet school oh, thing. Right. But You're let's, right. Let's get, exactly. so, so your question is, uh, I didn't really even let you get, get it through. I'm sorry, but all this information was coming, and I wanted to confirm it. So, but, but your question so, is, is what exactly, like what happened or why or what right. your next step is? So, so my question is, what now? Like, like I put basically all my energy and time into that. Like, it's almost like, like okay, I have doubt in my head. Should I even continue? Do I have to work more on myself oh. to be more appealing to get into the program, or is it, or is it, or is it? I'm not getting in because there's a higher purpose. There's another road for me to take for a higher reason. I felt that the first thing I heard is that it wasn't meant to be. That it's just not meant to be. Um, let me just see. If, let me ask uh, inside. Like, sure. So should she? There's another program that's better for you. Um, In Australia? Because there is one school I just found out that I need to apply for, which I didn't know that, um, there was. That's it. That's the, that, that program that you just found out about, that's the one. Okay. Mm-hmm. In Australia or yeah. is it somewhere else other than Australia? I don't care where I go. Wherever, <laughs> whatever. Like, okay, so what I'm being told – Whatever, like rather than testing me, just confirm, just know that whatever that program is that you just mentioned, that's the one. Okay. Yeah, but they're not telling me if it's in Australia or not, but it is. Is it in Australia? Yeah? Yeah, the other schools in Australia. Yeah, yeah. I already applied. I, yeah. I, I thought there was only two, but apparently there's an, a third School There's that, a third um, one. Yeah, I heard that. There's a third one, and that's the one you need to apply to. Okay. Is there a B so in its contain- name at all? Is there a B uh, in its name? Um, no, it's Murdoch. Murdoch. But why do I – I don't know why I'm hearing this. And, you know, sometimes things come in and you don't even know what – something of Buckland, Buck. Buckland. I don't know if it's the town. I don't know if it's the street it's on. Don't kill yourself over this. If it doesn't come automatically, fine. But I feel like this third one that you're talking about, that's the right. that's the one. Look, in life, sometimes we need the rejection to push us to find where we need to go. Or sometimes we need to go to destination B before we can even be revealed to what destination C is. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Like okay. I'll just I'll just give you a quick yeah, I you know, as a quick story, I'll just tell you this. So years ago when I was, was wanting to get married, I had actually my mother's very intuitive and I and I actually knew a psychic and they both said I had to go to Santa Barbara. And I was like, I don't want to go to Santa Barbara and they were saying, No, you need to go to Santa Barbara to look at places to get married. And meanwhile I wanted to get married in Laguna Legal. 
And so anyway, I had to convince my father at the time and my then husband, I had to convince them. I had to convince them that I wanted to get married in Santa Barbara just to go to Santa Barbara. So we did. <laughs> but as soon as I went there, I was like, I can't, I don't want to be at this place. This is horrible. What is going on? Well, it just so happened that place was a competitor of the place that I wanted to get married in Laguna Niguel. And what that, that place in Santa Barbara did, because it happened to be during a recession, they gave such an amazing offer that I was able to take that offer and show it to the place in Laguna Legal, and they matched it. Okay. What? So sometimes, oh yes. So sometimes you're being guided being to go in one direction because you have to go find a. So in other words, if you got accepted to this one that you got rejected, then you you probably would have gone. You wouldn't have necessarily known about the third one or even like pursued it or even been aware of it in the same way or looked at it in the same way. So look at this, ble- right. this is a blessing. Look at this rejection as a blessing Ooh. and go okay. after that third one and keep me posted. I- I'd like to know what happens with you. Okay. I will. Thank you so much. I appreciate your help. Bye. Absolutely. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll make, uh, you said that you can do one more, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll make this one be the last one. Nine two nine, you're on the air. Hello. Hi. Uh, where? What's your name and where are you calling from? Hi. Um, my name is Terry, and I'm calling from New York. How are you? Good. How are you? And is that T Terry with a T? Yes, ma'am. T E R I. Okay. T E R I. Okay. Um. So because of the end, the last one, I, 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 I just, I'm going to ask you, are you wanting to speak with someone who's passed away or are you wanting something psychic? I mean, I could just tell you what I get, but you tell me if you have a preference. Um, I prefer something psychic. I have a question for you. Okay, go for it. I'm listening. Okay. Sorry, I'm a little out of breath. <laughs> I was actually cleaning I didn't up. even notice. I didn't even notice, <laughs> honestly. Okay. All right. So I'm going to be going back to school uh, for my master's. And Mm -hmm. at one point, I wanted to do music business. Okay. And um, I'm intuitive myself. But then I'm I'm picking up uh, something in regards to music technology. And I want to see which is going to be beneficial. I'm not really into the music like when I like I used to be, but I wouldn't mind going into the music technology field. Okay, so you want to know whether you should pursue music technology? Yeah, or is the music business? But I prefer music technology. I'm gonna. Okay, so do you feel like the music music technology? Because I have the answer, but before I'm gonna give you the answer, I, and I don't want to. Okay. So do you feel like the music technology will be more lucrative? I think so in the long run. Um, Is that part of your decision making? It could be. It could possibly be. Okay, I'm going to be straight with you. Um, Carrie, I'm going to be straight with you. So... I'm a, I'm a straight shooter, and I, I've anything, and since we're doing this work for about a decade, I've had to learn how to, like, say things in a more softer way. But I think you can handle it because you're a New Yorker like I am. I'm being told you don't have your priorities straight in your decision-making. I feel like you're thinking too much. I mean, not 100% conscious of this. But there's a little too much concern about the money. And the thing is, is that you're underestimating who you are, Terry. You're very sassy. You're really smart. I feel also the presence of, like, a grandmother energy around you who's really strong and a no-nonsense kind of woman, and she's got your back. The thing is, okay. is that you need to know that the technology is a way for you to hide in kind of like technology, but the music business is an opportunity for you to step forward into who you are and to go forward about using Terry. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. Yes, it does. Yeah, because you're a dynamo and you're really sharp and you have a lot to offer. Have you looked into NYU's program? You know what? Yes, I have. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes. I'm looking into it now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So my my husband actually teaches in that program. <laughs> really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's his last uh, name? 
Uh, well, I don't. I don't want to mention okay. about him. You contact me. Know. You contact me later. I'll tell you. But he's in business know. management. His his okay. name is. I'll tell you. His name is Brian Long. Brian Long is his name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, All right. So okay. if you have any questions, that I. I can't, I, I definitely can't say he can do anything as far as admissions. That's not where his role is. But if you have uh, questions about the program and if you have any questions about what he does, then you can definitely reach out to me. And just to let you know that, you know, the thing about the music business is that it's, it's, it's so interesting. The different genres of music also are different. So for instance, like, if you have a passion for country music, that's not his bag, right? Or if you have a, uh, you know, if you have a, uh, this kind of thing. So it's not only knowing about the business, but it's also the genre as well. Does, it, does that make sense? Yeah, it definitely does. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. It makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I can't help but feel that regardless of what I know about the music business, because I happen to actually, I pursued music law and I worked in music law a bit before I got into this work. Um, my feeling is, is that you actually could be a very successful businessman, businesswoman. I mean, I said even man, as if it doesn't matter, no matter what you choose to do. Um, because um, you're a very smart woman, and I do feel like you're honest. I do feel like you're honest. The only thing is, you just want to keep your, uh, in, like you want to just make sure that you're coming from a place of heart and not about the money. Because as long as you, and that's something that I have to say that you know my my son's father is really good about. Like, yes, he's able to think about the business aspect of things and making money for his clients. But he has a reputation of coming from the heart and being a good guy in the business. And that's why he's been able to be in this business for a really long time, like a really long time. So I, I would say if there's anything I can leave you with is to follow your heart and to trust yourself, but always maintain that you're coming from a place of integrity and that you're doing it for the, a higher purpose. Um, and also, don't let the money direct you too much because that can actually take away from what's special about you. I agree. Okay. I'm, I'm definitely taking your advice. Okay. But I'm going to say this other thing. There's no reason why while you're at it, you can't take a class or two in the technology to See if that you can combine the both in some ways also I'm being told. But they're saying that the business is better for you. But you're also the type, this is what I'm being told, that even if you do pursue the music business and you take my advice, you're still going to think about that technology here and there. So I would do the business, but also see if you can either minor in technology or take a class or two in it, just so that you know for yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, I'm, I'm yeah. taking your advice. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Wow. Okay. So okay. are you on Facebook? Pardon me? Yeah, I'm on. You, you know what? Facebook? I'm more of an Instagram. I mean, I am on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook. But if you really want, like, my quick attention, then message me on Instagram. I'm at medium psychic um, healer Paradise. And Paradise is spelled P-A-R-D as in David, I as in Igloo, S as in Sam. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay. All right, you're Thanks. welcome. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Um, Bye. I Bye. I wanted to ask you uh, goodbye. Yeah. You know, we're not going to – I think that's the, that's going to be our last call. We're not going to take any more calls. But uh, I wanted Good. to ask you – actually, it was uh, <laughs> Kelly. Are you there? Are you there, Kelly? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why don't you uh, well, ask uh, Pardis the question that we were talking about? Well, um, we were wondering if maybe, I don't know about every Monday, but maybe one Monday a month have medium Mondays and mm -hmm. have you come on mm -hmm. or have a day where you can come on maybe with Karen on a Psychic Tuesday or Thursday. Yes, that's nice. Excuse and me, maybe our 
medium on that day with her and take the medium questions? That's fine. I mean, I even love what we did tonight. I could do this once a month because if you notice, sometimes the mediumship will 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 do the mediumship, but then people also have the psychic. But then, for instance, the last woman who just spoke, she started off with the psychic, but then I also incorporated feeling her grandmother coming in and letting her know that that energy was with her. So, um, I would love to, I would love to do something once a month if that's you know a possibility. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe more. Okay. Um, yeah, would would you be uh, willing to come in and do like a a fun run, like maybe next week on a Tuesday or Thursday and meet Karen? Uh, that would be possible. Tuesday, I, I'll tell you this: uh, a week from on November fifth, I start a psychic protection class. Um, so I can't, I won't be able to do any Tuesdays for the next six weeks. But right. um, if you wanted to do another Monday or even a thir- Thursday, it depends on the Thursday because I I, thinking, I, it depends on the day. Mm-hmm. I was oh, thinking okay. Maybe, you know, well, now, if you're talking about her meeting Karen, it would have to be on a Thursday probably. But but I think that the reason I think that we've talked about the Monday is that we want something because see Kelly does uh, chakra healing, and sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, I've always made it a point not to wear her out because I, I know one time she went on a talk show and she she did like four or five talk sequences in a night, and I sort of told her that we were going to try to make sure that she doesn't have to do that anymore. So what we do is we have like a guided meditation on a Sunday, and then we have psychic days on Tuesdays and Thursdays that gives Karen and Kelly a chance to rest. The thing is, is that Karen Page is excellent and and and, and fabulous in every way. But, you know, she's not a medium. And sometimes mm-hmm. it, if she will get questions posed to her that are medium questions, and then we kind of have to – and we, I think what it is is I don't want somebody to call themselves something that they don't feel they should be called or they don't feel that they are. And it kind of wears mm-hmm. – you know, also what's happened is, is that one of the reasons we do our psychic days is because um, – we cover every topic, not necessarily the paranormal. And sometimes what will happen is uh, when we cover other topics, like people that aren't necessarily psychic, like we had a paranormal investigator on, and people were calling in wanting readings for the paranormal investigator. It's like, I, yeah, I but think they that can't do that. that. That's people, different. Yeah. If, if, people, if, if people knew where to, when to go or when to, you know, call in or, mm-hmm. you know, we could mm-hmm. redirect them in the right way. Like, uh, you know, like for instance, uh, you might be able to say, okay, well, maybe you should, maybe Karen should try this or maybe Pardee should try this or maybe have a, have a resource, um, you know, ways that we could go, um, you know, that might be something to look into. And that's kind of why Absolutely. we're looking into this. Does that make sense? Okay. It's, it's, yeah. I'll talk to you Very more about cool. it um, in a few days. We'll, we'll go over some possibilities okay. of how to approach it. Okay? Sounds good, Jonathan. Well, I had a thank lovely you. time this evening, and I want to thank everybody. you for having me, and it was a lot of fun. And take care. Thank, thank you so thanks much. Thanks, everybody. So much. You were okay. amazing. Bye-bye. Thank you for coming oh, back. Thanks thank you. so sweet, Barbara. Yeah, have a good night. Thanks, everybody. Okay, you too. Bye-bye.